Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Um, today I'm talking about one of my favourite songs of all time ever. Something that uh, my mum used to listen to when I was a little boy. Um, it's a brilliant song written by um, Maria McKee. And it's called A Good Heart. But the version I'm talking about is the Fergal Sharkey version. My mum loved Fergal Sharkey. And I still do. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. In its own right, A Good Heart is an amazing, you know, 80s classic song. But it's really difficult to imagine how Fergal Sharkey went from being uh, in the undertones, which is, it's a punk band. I want to hold you, want to hold you tight. Get teenage kicks right through the night. To this kind of uh, billowing white shirt, uh, 80s soulness that happens uh, with uh, when he's doing a good heart. Um, anyway, so Fergal Sharkey is a singer from Northern Ireland, uh, most widely known as the lead vocalist of punk band The Undertones in the 70s and 80s. A Good Heart was released as the first single from his self-titled debut album in 1985. It was written by Lone Justice frontwoman Maria McKee um, about her relationship with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers keyboard player Benmont Tench. I did not know that. So this is why I'm wearing this sort of billowing shirt. You'll see from the video that it's kind of... It's the, it's the way everyone used to do things in those days. Um, it's produced by Eurythmics' David Stewart. Dave Stewart. It was his only number one single and stayed at the top of the UK singles chart for two weeks. I felt like it was more, but when this came out, I was a small child with no concept of time. Fergal Sharkey is a lifelong fly fisherman and has campaigned against the pollution of British rivers. Um... Does that feel like two, two truths and a lie? I didn't, it'd be really great if, um, if we look closely at the video for um, A Good Heart, you see that it's a billowing shirt and then like with some like uh, homemade flies uh, attached to it. I don't know anything about fly fishing, sorry. Just a, on a side note, this hat. Now don't be cruel. Tell me the truth. Um, I have no hesitation in wearing it in front of you guys, and obviously there's hundreds and thousands of you. Um, and yet, I'm, I'm still sort of reluctant to wear it in real life, in the street. Is that because I know in my heart it looks shit? Or is it just, why is that? Is that because it's different, people will judge me? Or maybe I don't want to create a splash? Use the comment section below <laughs> to tell me whether or not I should wear this in real life, or just on internet. I always do a meow face when that uh, slide guitar part glides past us all. Good job I got a capo out. It seems to be in A sharp. I hear a lot of stories. I suppose they could be true. High is the risk of striking out, the risk of getting hurt. So, I mean, I love... I've heard Maria McKee do this song a few times live and so on. And, um, you know, her interpretation of it is obviously, you should probably consider that to be the definitive. But there's something about Fergal Sharkey's voice when he sings it that I adore. I mean, sure, he's got like, he sings a little bit sharp a lot of the time because, you know, that's where the excitement of, of punk comes from a lot of the time. You know, you don't want stuff to be right on the money when it's that kind of... Loud guitars, exciting music, excitable music. If that's what punk is, it's excitable music. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> but when he's doing this sort of soul stuff, and he's like, hear a lot of stories, toys. He's got that sort of little bit of Brian Ferry, all Fergal Sharkey. It's, it's a really distinctive vocal. I mean... That's it. I hear a lot of stories, I suppose they could be true. All about love and what it can do to you. Oh, God. Why didn't I have a... I'd probably still be famous if I had a vibrato technique like that. High is the risk of striking out, the risk of getting hurt. And still I have so much to learn. I know 
Cause I think about it all the time I love That's it That real love is hard to find It's hard to sing that Hard to find Oh no, it's not too bad It's just a totally different way of doing it It's actually quite a folky And a good heart these days is hard to find True love, the last in kind. Hmm, okay, enough about that vibrato technique. I've made my point. Okay, the bass line's doing a lot of different stuff in there, but um, but wait, you can hear like some. Which is a much faster version of a Motown thing. The bass player, actually, uh, it doesn't say it in my research, but if I'm not correctly mistaken, I think it might be Tinos Palantino. I've forgotten how to say his name, actually, but a really famous bass player from that period of time. You know a lot of stories, I suppose they could be true. All about love and what it can do to you. God, I love his voice. Oh, two drummers. Come off it. You don't need that many. You do if one of them's only going to do that. Not pulling their weight. And they're both doing that. All about love and what it can do to you. So who's providing the uh, sort of 16th... Uh... Risk of hurt and still oh, it's a shaker. Somebody's just going... Tss, 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 tss. And then uh, the, the 16th notes are actually coming from the... From Philemonos, I, I, I'm going to find out who's who played. Like, let me just do a quick search. I know you're all dying to know who played bass for Fergal Shawkey. Oh, so the bass is Nathan East. So I would say, therefore, that the um, sort of sixteenth note percussive contributions are coming from the bass, and there's also like a somebody does a little bit of a shaker thing. So there's a there's a percussionist and a bass player providing the sixteenth. Is that? <laughs> it's probably doing something like that, but uh, that's one of my favourite bits. And you don't often hear bass players prepared being prepared to put that little bit of stink on it. But in this instance, it's just what you need. It's lovely. All the time. Okay, I'm just, I know I shouldn't go on about it, but look at Fergal Sharkey's appearance. In this. So, sleeves rolled up to about here. I think he's got his, he might have something at the neck and the shirt done up. But his, his hair is cut to that length where it's, just, well, it's just collar length. Maybe just, yeah, a little bit longer than collar length. So, you, you know, it sort of, so it moves in an interesting way. And it's really sort of, he's just brushed it really nicely. It's, it's got that sort of grown-up choir boy vibe to it. My expectations may be high, I blame it on my youth. Sooner I fall on. God, he really nailed it, didn't he? Can you imagine coming, coming out of the undertones and doing this as your first sort of solo release? Absolutely smashed it. My God. I, but I don't think my mum was even aware that he was in the undertones. She couldn't have been. Is than being oh, it's a lovely bit of uh, hammy, hammy, um, alone. Wait, and then one of his fringe drops. Alone. <gasps> Boo hoo. God, you know, when you see like um, the renter crowd in, in music videos, for some reason in the 80s, they actually look convincing. Something different in the, the way the catering budget was uh, apportioned, I think. <laughs> see that bit of, uh, of air drumming. It's, uh, one of my favourite fills is a kicker. So, you know, it's normally kick on the one and on the three. And then there's a snare on the two and the four. That's how you get a. 
but I love it when you do a fill going into the next bar, which sort of preempts the last, uh, like a the last, the last. Sorry, preempts the four, the last snare, which is on the last snare of the bar, which is normally on the four. So it goes gaga, gaga. So it's uh, one e and. So it's one E, so it goes one E and a two E and a three E and duh. So a uh, four. So those are my favorites. They do one here, watch. And then once again, clash. Clash? Clash. The last thing I <laughs> a lot of people say that I'm an awkward dancer. Um, I learned everything I know from this Fergal Sharky video. Slide solo. Who's playing it? Seems like um, Chris de Burr might be playing it in a leather blues on. I mean, for all of its popness, that that could be a Rory Gallagher slide solo, don't you think, guys? Sounds fucking awesome. Is that a heart? That the harm? The harm? It's not a harmony part. It's a unison part sung by the three backing vocalists. It's really cool. But one of them sort of drifting off and going flat. Childhood dreams. I think that's actually Fergal that does that bit. Childhood dreams. My ideas of love went to school. If I don't start looking now, I'll be left behind. So you see, even if, if you do like what would be a natural third over those things, it just doesn't bring anything to the table. Childhood dreams, unison, all three backing vocalists and then just shut up and wait for the chorus. That's an amazing piece of economical production. That, that's what actually, actually, one of the things I love about Dave Stewart's work in the 80s especially. When he produced stuff, there's nothing extraneous in there, but it still sounds luxurious just because of the nature of the, the sounds themselves. But there aren't that many in play. It's only like the stuff that you really, really need. That's why the Eurythmics were immensely successful. None of the productions were carrying anything they didn't need to. It never became one of those sort of Phil Spector arrangements. Um, I mean, I suppose it, it's extraneous in the extent that, that there, there are two drummers, three backing vocalists, but the parts themselves are actually quite economically chosen. Every part that I've watched these two drummers play that has been identical so far. I can imagine that <laughs> when they have an off night, everything's flaming. Probably just sounds even better. By flaming, I mean uh, one of the strikes occurs before the beat, the other just after. It's a flam. No, it sounds like it's pla instead of psh, it's pla flam. What time they are flaming as well? They're, they're hitting the um, snare drum with both sticks at the same time, which is nearly impossible. I don't think they're trying to do it tightly. So it seems like every snare is just this huge thunderous uh, clap. <laughs> Even in that sort of high register. Woo! Gives it the wobble. Brilliant stuff. Oh, here comes a great bit. So that part there is like... Um you know and these the duties of um, the backing vocalists and Fergal are divvied up according to Dave Stewart's whim and uh, wisdom as it turns out because it's just brilliant so much fun to listen to you're loving this record aren't you because it's awesome thought so did you hear that little bit of uh, he's like Who's making that noise? And then you hear the wobble and you know, that's Fergal Sharky. Mm. No. Oh, 
that's awesome. Absolutely brilliant. Well, I stand by my earlier assertion that uh, you don't need a second hit when you've got one like that. It's fucking brilliant. Nice one, Fergal Sharkey. You're doing God's work uh, trying to keep the rivers clean. I like to swim in rivers. I'm not much of a fisher person. I don't think it's very kind to the fishes. But, you know, you're right. that We should definitely um, clean up Britain's rivers and all the rivers. Let's, why stop there? Wonderful stuff. I, I think you'll agree that that's a brilliant record. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, and uh, keep coming back, lads. And Ledettes, and everybody in between. I love you all. Nice one. <laughs>